Hello. Uh, my name is Lars, and I work for a company called Hybiza. We build mainly uh, web shops, and, um, but also um, regular websites using Wagtail. And um, I'm going to do a quick talk. So this talk is called uh, Unobtrusive Internationalization. So about that internationalization, I think it's really obtrusive. Right. So what does it actually mean? Internationalization is making your site translatable into another language. So Wagtail has you covered. In Wagtail, internationalization is built in. And for the page tree, that's actually a really great solution. I wouldn't change anything uh, about that. However, it's not uh, always that your entire project is only built in Wagtail. Usually, you also have models that are regular plain Django models, and these need translation as well. So now, um, I'm a bit old here, maybe even the oldest person in this room, because when I started coding Python, we did it with a chisel and a hammer in stone. <laughs> but the first thing that I started doing when I started coding Python was actually internationalization for Django models. And this time, I think I might have it. So um, let's talk about obtrusive internationalization. What I mean is that if you um, have to make changes to your code to um, make models translatable. So in this case, this is what Wagtail provides if you want to internationalize plain Django models. So uh, you have to go into your code and uh, add a decorator and add um, an extra base class. So that is considered obtrusive. You need modifications in the code to add internationalization. A different method for uh, translation of models is model translation. And in this case, you need to write code like this. You need to put it in a, in a, in a file called translation.py and also check it into the app that you are uh, want to make interna internationalized. Yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> so it would be nice if we didn't have to change any code. It would also be nice if we didn't have to change any queries. And it would be even better if the performance would be unchanged. And also if we had proper migrations for all these changes. So some of the things that I just uh, showed you, they don't actually make migrations for the fields that can be translated. So we need that. And then the last bit, we want to make this work for models that are not part of the project code. So models that live somewhere in site packages, maybe even models that are built in with Django. We need these nice things because we want to reuse code. We don't want to write code that can only be used in a context of internationalization. We want to just write things that do one thing and reuse them in a lot of projects if they are internationalized or not. And we want to internationalize existing projects. And we don't want to spend any time doing it. No effort, please. That's what we need. <laughs> so what are you standing here for? Go fix it. Dref. <laughs> so let's have a look at how it's working. In here, here, this is uh, all the code that's really needed to internationalize a site using our package. So we need to make changes to the databases. In this case, we change the engine, the database <coughs> engine. And we need to add a setting called translated fields. What you're seeing here is um, first the app label, so that's example. Then the model name, it's called example. And then the field name, it's called second. And behind that, you have to, to state if you want to have a fallback. So if you haven't translated the field yet, should we use the value from the main language? What you're also seeing is that we actually uh, made the permission name translatable. So these 
are models that in, are in Django, and you can't actually translate the permissions. So these will always remain in English, no matter what you do. They're not translatable. So how do we go proceed from that? So um, this package comes with a couple of commands. The first command is called make interna internationalized migrations. I18N is actually uh, short for internationalization. So what happens when we run this command? We generate migrations, but only for the part of the code that deals with internationalization. So here you can see that for the permission model that's built into Django, we generate a couple of new fields called name Espanol, name French, and name Dutch. Now these migrations, when you um, take an, an, uh, a standard approach, they will go into the migrations folder that's in your site packages. That's not what we want. Not all uh, sites have the same languages. So if you look carefully, you can see that the migrations actually go in the project. So the project is called example. There's a folder i18n migrations, and then a folder for the app. That's where the migration goes. Next up, we have, uh, we have to apply the migrations. So in this folder i18n migrations, for all the apps that we have translated fields for, we can find only the migrations that deal with those translated fields. Now, we, uh, we also ship an extra command called a18n migrate, and it will just take the migrations from the original app, take the migrations from the i18n migrations folder, combine them, and then run all the migrations. So that means if you have changes in your app, maybe in Django, you will find that out because it says there is a maybe a merge conflict in the migration tree. You need to add a merge migration. Maybe some field was added or something has changed to the field which you transl made translatable. The I make ITN migration will detect all this and generate new migrations for you. So let's look at the queries that are generated. If you paid close attention, you notice that I changed the database engine. And this is actually the principle. So in the data database engine lives the query compiler. In Django, you write a query using Python classes. These Python classes, based on the ORM you have chosen, will get uh, turned into SQL statements. And this is where we hook into this process. So depending on which language you uh, are currently in, it will change the column name for the field that is translated. So if the field is in the settings, it will note that and generate this query for you. So at the third line, you can see coalesce, Django flat page, title NL, and if that is null, then please take Django flat page dot title. So this will actually prefer the translated name, and if it's not there, it will fall back to the title. So in this case, I made two fields translatable, title and content. Um, yeah. So here is why we don't have to change any code. Because we don't need to, because nothing has changed. If you run migrate, it will know nothing about the migrations. Only I18 and migrate will know this. But we do have the migrations. OK, so here you can see what happens with the permission. On the left side, you can see uh, address, then land, and can delete country. And the model is, is translated. On the third line, there's, it says adres van gebruiker. This is Dutch. But can add user address is still English. On the right side, I have these. I, uh, I translated the name field of the permission. So it says address, land, kan land toevoegen. And this is code that lives in Django. And I could still translate it. And my migrations are in my project. So we have a lot of tests here. And when writing tests, we try to find the limits of what we can do with this approach. So here's some weird things that work. Filtering with uh, underscore underscore, this works perfectly fine. 
Here you can see it test, and it tests filtering on translated fields should work just fine. So first we perform the, the test uh, in the base language, then we override the language, change it to Dutch, different numbers come out. The next thing that is in the test is test aggregate. Aggregations on translated fields should work. So here's something very weird. First we make, it, uh, we make an aggregation by summing rating, and then we override with in Dutch, and now we can sum over only the Dutch fields. So this query doesn't require any changing nowhere. Some even weirder things that work. So uh, this query we annotate with an, uh, with an F statement. Um, I'm, this is not the context to explain exactly what this means, but it means um, we put uh, into a new variable called class the value of the field rating and we add three to it. And then we filter, that it should be uh, only ratings less than 20, and then we take the sum of the annotation. And then we override in Dutch and we do the same, and it still works because, yeah, we only change the column name when generating the query. This is not rocket science. It, it, it should still work, so it does. Uh, the last test is also a nice feature because we actually have a, a mechanism to fetch specific translated fields. So what happens here is summing over translated and non-translated fields with F and L10F should work just fine. So right here we can take the localized value and add it to the value from the base language. That's what happens here. So we take the Dutch value and the English, we sum it and we put it in rating total. So that works as well. Now, we have been using this for two years in production, and uh, if you are interested, please have a chat with me or my colleague Geert-Jan, he's up there, and this is it. <laughs>